How can you listen to Big Ben without upsetting the neighbours? How did gangrene pave the way to the modern orchestra? How do you mould dough? Is this an economics how liquidation of an no, enterprise? No, nothing business? to do with money. No, no. sorry. I suppose you could you could drink the problem away, could you? Aha! A little clue there. This is the problem. Here we have three empty glasses. Here we have three full ones. Now the problem is, I want you to get from that position to that by just moving one glass, and I bet that neither of you. Can liquidate this problem. Ten p, I think. Definitely. Empty this full, empty full, empty full, empty full. And yes. one move. The move of one glass. It's just a matter of deciding which glass. That, of course, has got to be the key glass. So I'll remove that and put that there. No, Wrong. no. Uh, hang on a second, Fred. Actually, you can't do this without moving two glasses. So I win my ten p back. No, no, she said no, one move. No, no. One, one glass. This is how you do it, gentlemen. Take this receptacle here, pour the red liquid into this receptacle thus, place it back, and that is how I liquidate the problem and, at the same time, liquidate the opposition. Thank you for the money. Very clever. How did gangrene pave the way to the modern orchestra? Eh? For this melodic and historical how, I will need the help of the FDO. What's the FDO? The Fred Dinage Orchestra. <laughs> Excuse me. And here they are, the members of my orchestra. The string section. The brass section. The percussion section. And of course, the woodwind section. And all of them controlled, led by one man, the conductor, me. And the conductor makes sure they start on time, they finish on time, the beat is right, the tempo is right. And he does all of that with his conductor's battle. But what about the gangrene? I'm pleased you asked me that. Now, for this, I need the help of a passing musician. Mr Jones, are you free? Yes, sir. And would you take that staff, please? You see, because in the 17th century, it was a gentleman called Lully who first realised the importance of the role of the conductor in the orchestra and how he needed something with which to control them, hence this heavy staff. Are you ready, Mr Jones? Yes, sir. Gentlemen. Louder! 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 Oh, me foot! Precisely! Because, you see, Paul Lully stove in his shoe with his staff, his foot was badly damaged, became septic, gangrene set in, and the poor fellow... died. And thereafter, conductors the world over realised they needed a safer method of conducting the orchestra, hence the battle. And that's how gangrene paved the way to the modern orchestra. Ouch, that how hurt. OK, here's a less painful how. How can identical twins not be identical? Now, for this how, we're going to need a quick reminder of the life cycle of the common or garden frog. Now, frogs, of course, start off life as um, frog spawn, then become tadpoles. Now, um, tadpoles, of course, have um, tails and gills. They can breathe underwater. And then, eventually, tadpoles turn into frogs who have grown legs, they've lost their tails and lost their gills, OK? Now, that process is called metamorphosis. You've heard of that before. Mm -hmm. now what then, about the twins? Yes, meet a pair of twins who are anything but 
identical. In this tank here, we have a creature called an axolotl. This one's named Axel, Axel after Axolot, Axel Rose. <laughs> and this side, a creature called a salamander. Now, these two were born of the same parents on the same day. One turned out to be a salamander, and the other turned out to be an axolotl. How? Now, how and why? Well, all salamanders start off life looking like an axolotl. They have those external gills which allows them to breathe underwater and that flattened tail for swimming underwater. Then at some point in their life, they're supposed to turn into salamanders. Now a salamander is clearly a land creature, no external gills, flat feet and no flattened tail. But these don't turn here, they stay babies. They stay babies, they are fully developed babies in that they can reproduce. And this axolotl, if he meets another axolotl, will give birth to lots of little axolotls. <laughs> but why didn't he actually turn into a salamander when his brother clearly did? Well, the problem is environmental. It seems that salamanders, have, um, axolotls rather, have inherited a genetic problem that stops them from developing. And this is because they need something in their water to help them become salamanders, because in the lakes in um, Mexico, called Xochimilco, where you find axolotls, there's a lack of iodine. And if you were to add some iodine, like I'm going to do here, to that water, it would be just enough to turn an axolotl into a salamander that he perhaps always wanted to be. And that's how two identical twins cannot actually be identical. How can you listen to Big Ben without upsetting your neighbour, without going to London, without the aid of a safety net, or how can you make ear rims? A quadraphonic how? Good value how, Carol? How Absolutely. does it work? Absolutely. To find out the answer, please come with me to the Vorderman Corporation Acoustic Research Laboratories. Now, first of all, we have to understand that Big Ben is, in fact, the bell which is to be found in the clock tower of the House we of Parliament. We knew that. Absolutely. Oh, yes, 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 now, we want to imitate that sound, so please select a resonator. Pardon? Um, pick up a coat hanger, Pick correct? up a coat hanger. Yep. If you're looking for something with a beautiful tone, no, something one, which can one. sustain the note, something which is sort That's of it, symmetrical. Yep, do, okay. yep. Next, I want you to select a sound conductor. Pardon? Um, pass us a piece of string, Fred. Piece of string. I want one which is particularly efficient and glamorous, then centrally intertwine the sound conductor to the resonator. Have we go. Tie the coat hanger to the middle of the piece of string. Tie to the middle of the Next, string. take the extremities of the sound conductors and with the tips of your first digits and press firmly into the external parts of your organs. Hey. Um, stick the string in your ears, Fred. Got it. Now, while the appendage is dangling freely, strike it against a hard and unyielding surface. Yes. Yeah. Bang the coat hanger on the table, Fred. And right. tell me what you hear. Eureka! Big Ben! Big Ben, it's exactly! Like bell. What's happening is the coat hanger is starting to vibrate. The vibrations are passing up through the string to the ears. The ears are amplifying the sound and they hear Big Ben. What? Oh, brilliant! But why aren't the neighbours, or you and I, hearing Big Ben too? Well, that's because the vibrations don't easily pass through air to our ears because air is a very poor conductor of sound whilst the string is a splendid sound conductor. And that is how you can listen to Big Ben without upsetting your neighbours. Carol, how does that work? I couldn't hear a thing you were saying. I had this string in my ears. Boys! How do you mould dough? Excuse me. Fred, Fred, Fred. How do you mould dough? I don't know. Well, have a look at this. Believe it or not, all these things are actually made out of moulded dough. And the person who knows how to do this is Gabby Campbell. Gabby, hi. Hi. Now, now you're going to show me how to mould something out of dough. What are we going to make? We're going to make a hedgehog like this one here. Right. All right. The first thing we need is, is dough. Yeah, so we've got eight tablespoons of flour in the bowls. Right. Four of salt. Right, so half as much salt yeah. as flour, yeah? We need to mix the two together, give it a quick stir so that we get a nice even consistency at the end. Right, salt and flour. Then yeah. you add? Four tablespoons water. Same as the salt. Same amount of water as salt, half as much flour. OK, right, in that goes. <laughs> it should go quite sort of stiff in a minute. OK, how long is the mixing going to take? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, well, when it's about this stage, you need to get your hands in and knead it for about oh, really? 15 to half an, half an hour, 15 minutes, half an hour. OK, all right. <laughs> but I actually had some that I needed earlier. I am glad. <laughs> right, so, right so there's yours. Damp cloth to keep it wet while we weren't using it. Right. And that's after, like, 20 minutes of kneading, yeah? Yeah, and you put it in the fridge for 10 minutes just to cool it down from okay. your hands. Right, now what you need to do is make your hedgehog shape. 
Right. Flatten it off at the bottom. Right. Put his nose out. Yeah. Okay. So what you need to do is pull the front bit out so you get a little nose. All right, that's my nose there. And yeah. pull the back bit out so you get a little tail. Got it? Yeah, oh yes, yeah, I can see it looking like a hedgehog already, Gabby. Yes. <laughs> right, so if you put it on your hand like this, but the easiest way to do it, get your scissors. Yeah. And we make spikes by just cutting into the dough like this. Oh, brilliant. Do that over the whole body. Yeah. All right, got that. Then what you need to do is get your little wooden stick, an old paintbrush would do, and make yeah. two holes for the eyes. Just poke where the eyes will be, won't they? Yeah. And one there. Okay, don't mind. Then what you need to do is make all these little holes around the front so it looks like his spines are coming out of his body. Okay. And you can use the side of the wooden stick just to make it look a bit more realistic. You just that. flatten it out the side of your wooden stick like that? Yeah. Like that, yeah? Yeah. Look at that. You can't lovely. tell the difference between mine and yours, can you? And you can pull a little bit off from underneath your hedgehog. Yeah. Roll it up in a little ball. Yeah. Stick it on for his nose. Looks like mine's had his nose caught in a door somewhere. <laughs> right. right, now what we need to do is put those on a baking tray yeah. and bake them in the oven. Now then, what temperature do you set your oven at? A really, really low temperature, but you need to cook them for at least 12 hours, so it's much cheaper and easier to put them in the airing cupboard or on a radiator. Oh, I see. Right, rather than leave it in the oven overnight. Yeah, so we're you. just... That's beautiful. And that's all the cooking you need to do? On yeah, the radiator? If, yeah, if you leave it on the radiator, it'll take a couple of weeks to dry out, but it's worth it, because in the end, you'll get one like that. Look at that. Now, obviously, you've painted yours. What kind of paints do you use? Well, these are just water-based paints, and obviously, you just need some brown mixed with yellow for the face. And did, that one's shining. Yeah, well, when if you've got time and if you want it shiny, you just use some varnish. It's all varnished up. And Bob's your uncle, finished. No, no, I, you've not just made uh, ornaments. Now your earrings are made out of dough. Oh, too, these aren't are good because you don't need to buy any expensive fittings. Yeah. You just use a paper clip while the dough's still wet, bung it in the top, and then bake them. Now that is brilliant. Can you keep this stuff anywhere? How long will it keep for? Well, it keeps for about 30 years as long as you don't get it damp or wet. So if you're going to keep it in the house, make sure it's in a dry room. Not the bathroom or the kitchen. Now... In the lounge, it'll keep forever. How come that this dough doesn't go mouldy? Right, it's the salt. We've put half the amount of salt as flour. And salt's a preservative. They used to keep meat and fish in salt before refrigerators. So it's a natural preservative. So now you know. Gabby, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Using salt, that's how you stop your dough from going mouldy. And that's how you mould dough. How do you get ready for that really big night out? These days, you know, people all smear themselves with all sorts of funny-smelling chemical concoctions, but in the old days, they never bothered with things like that. They had lots of nice natural beauty treatments. Oh. That's for your hair, Toppy, and that's yeah. for your oh, hair, thank Carol. You for it. Perfectly that's natural. Lovely. Yeah. Fill yeah. it full of vitality. That's great. Give it a yeah. lovely sheen. It works. What is it, Fred? Absolutely marvellous. What is it? That is hippopotamus fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <what's laughs> That's antelope dung. <laughs> <laughs> but all perfectly <laughs> natural and very good for you. Who says? The ancient Egyptians, that's who. And no. this wouldn't concern us, but if you wanted to get rid of grey hair, you'd <laughs> use that, perfectly natural. And what is it? Bull's blood. <laughs> and no dinner party or dance would be complete without one of these. Now, what do you think you do with that? It's a candle. It's no. a fire lighter. It's fire lighter. You're on the right lines. It's made of wax. You stick it on your head, you see, like that, and the wax is impregnated with wonderfully smelling herbs and spices. And as you get hot, so too does the candle. It melts and those wonderful fragrances drift down through your hair and right across your face. It's your own personal, natural air freshener. So I've got antelope dung in my hair. Yes. I've got hippopotamus fat in my hair. We've got candles, candles on, on our, our heads. heads. Yes. What, what next? next? It's... Party time! Are you dancing? You asking? I'm asking. I'm dancing. Here, haven't I seen you on the TV? The pyramid game! Ah. How do you refuse an Egyptian? I don't know, Carol. How do you refuse an Egyptian? Denial! Oh, tut, 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 tut. He's got sphinx. <gasps> Oh, you do give me the needle, you do, Fred. Oh. God, that was a rocking good night, wasn't it, lads? That was great. Well, I told cool. you how that wax on the head would work, didn't I? Oh, the air, the so fresh. Can you smell the herbs, the fragrance? Mm. Your own personal air fresher. Oh. And that's how the ancient Egyptians prepared for a great night out on the town. And that's... How for now! 
I could kill a cup of tea. Shall I pour? I'll be mummy. <laughs> I'll be mummy, get it? <laughs>